Hello and welcome to another tutorial on using Unity for creating augmented reality. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at scaling our objects on screen using our fingertips. Okay, so the first step is I've got a brand new project but it's going to be the exact same settings as all my previous ones. Um, now this is going to be using the actual mobile device because I don't know how we can simulate multi-touch. So I've basically gone into my build settings, I've pointed this towards Android uh, I've got my phone plugged in ready for testing this. Um, I've gone into player settings. I've gone to XR plugin and I've made sure I've got the Google AR Core installed. If, if you've not got that and you tick it, it will install the, the packages automatically. Um, I have gone into the other settings. Let's have a look. Project validation. I had to go into. There's a few errors. And I had to come in here and just say fix all, but I've already done that a little bit. Don't need this at the moment. I've gone into the player settings, um, I've just set my company name, I've come down on down here a little bit, I've just pointed it to Android 10, I've not tried any earlier or later versions but this does work, scripting backend is set to the IL2 CPP. Um, I've also come a little bit further down and I've made sure that the active input is set to both. Um, I know this is what we needed on the simulation to make it work, uh, I've not tested it um, with either for Android, I just know this does work. Okay, so that should be all the settings that you need. That can take a few minutes to set up. Uh, if that doesn't come on automatically, you can go on to uh, Window, uh, Package Manager, and then make sure that you have got, uh, for this case, the AR Foundation and the AR XR plugin installed. If you can't see these, you can add them manually by typing them in, by putting the exact name, um, and the version number, which I think I've shown that in a previous video. Okay, so that's basically how we can set up. Let's get into this. So um, one of the first things we're gonna do, I've got a main camera. This is not gonna be an AR just yet. I just wanna go through the basic settings uh, and showing kind of how it works, going through the process. So I'm going to add a canvas so that we can see what's happening. So adding the canvas, I'm just gonna pop over to the settings side and just say uh, scale with screen size. So I just double click, there's our canvas I hope. Why can't we see it? Okay, I'm not sure I can't see the outline for now, but I'm just gonna click on there, UI. I'm gonna have two text boxes. Uh, yes, I'm gonna import the TMP essentials. I'm not gonna worry about the examples for now. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna have a second text box. I don't really need two text boxes, but it was just my way of testing things and seeing what's happening. So I'll come to this view, we can see we can barely see the writing. So I'm just gonna move that up a little bit. That's the first text box, pushing it over. Second text box and push that down here, push that over. And I'm just gonna lock this one to the top left corner, this one to the bottom left corner. Again, this is, this is just a bit of faffing really. You could fast forward this a little bit. Um, and now when I resize the screen, it should kind of go with it so we can always see the writing. I'm also just gonna change uh, the font color so it just stand out a little bit better. I quite like sort of the old digital green. Uh, that should do for now. So that's just so we can output some data. Uh, that will do. So now I'm just going to create an empty um, scale. That's just, just something where to hold the code. So I've already created an empty C sharp file. I'm going to drag that on. Um, and the first thing we'll do is we'll open this in Visual Studio. And we'll just start doing it so we can test to make sure things are in fact actually working. This is really like doing hello world, you know, are things working properly? So I'm just going to create some global variables, some public variables for our text boxes so I can put the information in. Um, I'm going to go into my start. I'm just going to make sure it is running. Again, this is this is just like doing hello world. If this doesn't come up, we know we've made a mistake. Now it's putting their message there because I've not included the right library. So look at potential fixes. Um, yep, using TM Pro. So I just click on that and it puts it up. I'm just demonstrating that because I know a lot of people um, from my students in class do make these mistakes. They're not sure why. I'm trying to show you how you can help yourself with these things by letting Visual Studio help you. So now I've got the TM Pro library. I've got my two text boxes. And I'm just going to output debug data. That just tells me when I run my app that this code is actually it's functioning. Um, so now I'm going to come into my update function and I said the first step I went through was to make sure that it was in fact responding to an input. So I started by just, I created a little function that just says if input dot touch count is greater than zero. So it's sensing at least, at least an input. And then I want to put that on screen. So again, 
I just like to do my kind of hello world little thing. Now, if I was in the real world, this well, not in the real world, if I wasn't having to use my mobile device, I would have jumped back to Unity and I would have pressed play to see if it's working, but this takes a while to compile. So I'm just gonna see if I can do as much in Mongo as possible. Um, and now again, just for debugging purposes, I'm gonna loop through any any touch that there are, because I wanna know how many touches it can handle. So I've got a little for loop, so I'm gonna start at zero, while it's less than touch count. So if I was to touch the screen with all five fingertips, I would expect to see five inputs. So it would go from naught to four. Uh, obviously I++, plus plus. I'm going to increment, look at touch one, sorry, look at touch zero, one, two, three, etc. I'm just going to convert that input dot get touch into a variable, into a data structure called touch. And I'm just going to say the text file, which of course is this text up here, this text box. Um, if you're not sure, plus equals is just our way of appending. So it's going to add a new line. I'm going to just put the counter, then I'm going to put the actual I itself, so I know whereabouts in the loop we are, and then it's going to put the position dot to string. So I'm expecting to see an, an XY coordinate convert to a string and then added to this text box so we can see it all. So let's just press save, press save, come back into Unity, wait for this to compile and now I am going to build and run this. So hopefully this should just start up straight away, build and run. Um, do I want to save changes? Yes of course I do. Yep, I'm just going to overwrite the existing one. Yep, there we go, it's now starting to build. Okay, schoolboy error, I've just waited eight minutes for it to compile and I forgot to drag the text boxes over. So I'm just gonna quickly drag to that text box one, that text box two, and then recompile again. Hope it doesn't take eight minutes this time. Okay, so here we are in the little app and we can see if I now just press the screen. We've got the touch data, we can see we've got an ID, we can see the position, the resolution. So again, if I just move that around, and if I press it with my thumb and finger, we can see we've now got two blocks of text, not fitting on very well, because I didn't resize the text boxes, but we can see it is working. Okay, I'll do a quick resize of these text boxes just for making it a little bit easier for me next time. And Okay, so the next thing we want to do is obviously scale an actual object. So if I was just to bring a 3D object, a sphere into the space, uh, there we go, we've got the sphere. Um, don't have to worry about that. Uh, so this can act as our, as our first sample object. But I'm just going to speed things up a little bit. I'm going to drag uh, Suzanne on there from Blender and a teapot. Uh, I'm just going to spin Suzanne around so we can see facing the front. There we go. Uh, and what I'm going to do is quickly tag these as well. So if Susie's not tagged, so I'm just going to add tag. Um, so, um, Suze, I'm just going to keep it all lowercase, make it easy for me in a little while. Um, Suze, Sphere, and Teapot. And now I'll click back on each one and make sure that I do in fact add the tag. And this is just so I can see what I'm actually clicking on again to make sure that it's actually working. So each item is now tagged. So let's jump back into the code. In fact, no, before I go any further, the Sphere has already got a collider on, but uh, the monkey head has not, so I'm going to add a box collider. I'm going to add, a, oh not a box collider, on the teapot. Also a box collider. That should be enough now for us to actually get some interaction with. So I'm going to go, oh, have I put those in the wrong space? Okay, quick fix of the, of the environment. So I've now got three objects all tagged. Uh, let's go back over into the code. So I'm going to come back up to my global variables. Uh, and I'm going to add um, a few, a few, a few variables now. So one is going to be our scale. So when we click on the object, what is the current scale of it, so we can adjust it. The next one is the distance. As we put our fingers down, we want to know what the distance is between our two fingertips, so we can scale this up appropriately. And I'm also going to need to know what object are we rescaling. So I'm going to need to create a link to that. Um, I'm going to cut out a step when I did this in practicing, I, I hard code this but I'm going to show us how we can go straight into it um, and actually click on the one we want. So I'm coming down to my touch count, you know if touch counts bigger than zero let's run some of this code. Uh, again I won't need this but I'll just leave it in there for now anyway. Um, I'm going to need a ray cast. So when we touch the screen we're going to emit a ray from the point of where you've touched with the, with the first fingertip and that object is the one we're going to rescale. Um, now again, and this is code that worked for me, If you, there's probably many other ways of doing it. I've got the ray, I'm emitting the ray from the, from the camera, from the screen point to that ray cast, 
um, and it's your mouse position, which of course is just your initial touch screen. Um, this, again, this tried, this worked. I did try it a little bit with the input dot get touch and didn't work. Um, and then this did work, so I've not tried anything else. So I've got a physics ray cast. It's this ray. If the if it physically does hit something, it's going to output that data back to this variable, this data structure here. And we're only going to test for up to a hundred units into screen space. So if you've got an object a thousand units away, it's going to ignore it. And then I'm just going to write on the hit transform dot tag. That was why it was really important for me to tag these objects so that I can see the name of the thing and make sure it's working. And if it is working, well, it's not if it's going to do its best anyway, it's going to get the actual properties, the scale, the rotation, the location of that game object and store it back into this local game object. Well, it's a global variable, but it's local to this script. Um, and then we can start to think about scaling things. So again, I'm now going to come down into, well, I'm now going to create another function. I would like to go and test it now, and I would recommend you go in and just test this and make sure when you press an object, it does come up. But because of the compilation time with OPS, I'm not going to do that right now. So I'm now going to do another function, another if statement, another bit of selection. If input dot touch count is greater than or equal to two, so if I've got two or more touches, we're going to measure the distance. I could just say if it's equal to two, or I could just put if it's a, uh, greater than one, but I'm happy with this. Uh, and again, I'm just going to copy the whole code across in one go so you can see it, and I'll talk you through it. So I'm now getting touch zero and touch one, so hopefully this is your thumb and your fingertip unless you're scaling with your fingertip and your middle fingertip, in which case I've not tested that yet, it's probably worth having a go. And I'm just saying if the touch zero phase is begin, if this is the first time you've touched, or touch one phase is also just began, it's, it's the first time you've touched these, then we're going to get the distance, we're going to measure the distance between the two fingers that are touching. And that distance, so vect2.distance, this is basically just Pythagoras. So I'm getting the first position, and the second belt, the zero position, the first position, and measuring that distance. If you don't want to use vector two dot distance, you can just write the Pythagoras algorithm, and it'll work just fine. This just makes your code a bit neater. And then I'm going to get the scale from the object. So again, um, I've got this object. I'm getting its current scale, um, and that's it. It's going to measure it from that point. Um, if I got too many brackets there, I'm going to check that very carefully in just a moment. No, it's just indented wrong. That'll bug me, it doesn't make a difference, it's not Python, but it's just irritating to look at. So now the next part is, if it's not, if it's now the second time it's touching, we're now going to start doing the scaling, and this will happen almost seamlessly. Um, okay, somewhere between my old version and this version, I've, I've changed a bit, so I'm just going to put that in there, that should be fine. So again, um, we've, we've now said, yeah, we've, we've started the touch, we're now going to get those positions, we're going to measure that distance, um, just because now that's now what's actually going to be factored in. We're going to put that distance into the text box, but now we're also going to create a factor. So the factor is this distance, our current distance, divided by the original start distance. So this is now a proportional scale. When I didn't do this line, it would immediately rescale as soon as you touched. So if you touched your finger, say, four inches apart, the object would jump to that size. We didn't want that one to scale it smoothly. And then I'm going to transform the local scale uh, by the scale uh, which we've already measured up here, times the factor that we've just calculated here. And this should start to scale the object that we have touched on. So let's now save this and hope we've got no errors and I've not overlooked something. I'll go back into Unity and run the program. Okay, so we can now basically see in the app, we can click on the sphere and we can zoom it in. We can see it's picking up the tag. We can get on the teapot. There we go. We can see it's clicking on the tag there. And the same for the monkeys. We've now got a nice smooth scale. Okay, so the final step is now to make this actually an AR product. Right now, what that would have worked for is just any kind of app or game. So I've, I've created a new scene. I'm just going to very quickly delete the camera. I'm going to go on to XR. I'm going to click on AR Session. Click on XR, uh, XR Origin, which gives us our new uh, camera. I'm going to drag our script. Again, create another empty. I don't care what I call it now, I'm just going to drag our script on. I should really have the canvas again so we can see what's happening. I'm not going to do anything neat with it, just enough to show it's kind of working. So, yep, so now we've got our AR session, XR origin, we've got our canvas. I'm going to have a tracked image. Again, this is the same as I've done in previous tutorials. So, tracked image manager. We need an image library. 
So I'm just going to create an image library, XR image library. I'm not going to go as far as I have in previous videos. I'm not going to be having the whole multiple image tracking, but it's the exact same thing. So add image. I'm just going to drag my ET on. Now I'm not going to press add image properly. Drag my ET picture on from the previous tutorials. Uh, keep the extra runtime. Don't know if I need that. Specify size. I should, but I'm not going to at the moment. So now I've got that. If I come back onto our XR origin, I'm just going to drag um, Susie. So Susie's going to act as our game object. Again, this is what was replaced on the multiple image um, serial library. Let's drag that over. So now this should, once it sees the ET image, it should track and put our Suze over the top of it that is now also scalable because we've got our game object, our scale system. So if I could just put like scale handler. Okay, that should really be it now. So let's just again try and compile this. Just had to make a very quick fix. I'd actually forgotten to convert the, the FBX from Blender into an actual prefab with a game up with a with a box collider and the tag so I've just basically dragged it on resized rescaled dragged down there to create a prefab and then copied it across onto the tracked image So, as always, if you found any part of this video useful, please remember to like, subscribe, please feel free to share any suggestions for any future content. Uh, but this should now work with the early tutorials for doing multiple image tracking, allowing you to go and do scalable uh, prefabs. And I shall see you in the next video.